You are bored of your sweeper patches, you are frustrated and angry because everything sounds the same and you don't know how players like Frank Abadi, Jason Richardson, Jason Becker or Becker Romeo are doing it? Well maybe I have the solution for this problem in my 5 tips how you can pimp your sweeper patches. Here we go! Hey Guitar Champion, I'm Justin Hombach, back from my practice cave and welcome to today's video. Sweeping, one of the all-time favorite guitar techniques, but sometimes it can be a little bit frustrating mm. finding new and creative ways to spice up your sweeping. So and therefore I choose 5 tips and tricks to pimp your sweepings. As always the tabs for today's videos you can find in the link in the description box. There you can download them for free and please leave a subscribe, hit the bell, comment this video if you like it and like it if you like it. So much about that, let's start with tip number 1. And tip number 1 is actually a pretty basic one because it is well, having a cool chord progression in the first place and of course finding the inner melody of that cool chord progression. See, it's always easier to get something out of your sweeping if you have a cool chord progression underneath it because then you can create or you can take the cool sound of that chord progression and the melody, I'm going to talk about this a little later, and you can reproduce this cool sound with the all traditional sweep shapes that we all know. So it's nothing wrong about using the traditional sweep shapes but you can pimp them and spice them up when you have a cool chord progression underneath it. So what do I mean with the melody of a chord progression? Every chord progression has some sort of leading melody, a moving melody. You know like when you're going from one interval from one chord to the other interval from the next chord. For example let's go from A minor to F major and in the A minor chord we have A, C and E and in the F major chord we have F, A and C. So there's only one note different. And this movement going from the E to the F, we can use this and create a certain melody out of this, out of this chord progression. Here I have for you as an example one of my etudes from the Zen of Sweeping. What is the Zen of Sweeping? Let me answer you this question real shortly. It's my online course about sweep picking, especially designed for sweep beginners, where I have nine etudes right at the moment nine etudes more are following with the add-ons that are coming in the next three months and those nine etudes are built to boost your sweep picking to the next level to get more control and more speed of course about your right hand sweeping technique and the left hand shapes. So check the link in the description box there you will find more examples about more cool chord progressions and how you can outline them interesting with sweep arpeggios. So, and now I'm going to show you one of the etudes one of the first etudes where I demonstrate how we can have a beautiful melody inside of a chord progression. So let me demonstrate to you the chord progression real quickly so you can get a better feeling of what I'm meaning by all of this. Beware, this is really important, so stay tuned. So first we have A minor, going to E major, going to C major, going to D major, D minor, A minor, B major, E major, resolving back to A minor. Inside of these chords we have a melody that went descending chromatically. Starting on the A, here we have the root note of the A. The G sharp is the major third of the E major. The G is the fifth of the C. The F sharp is the major third of the D major. F is the minor third of D minor. E is the fifth of um, A minor. D sharp is the major third of B major. And then yeah, E is the root of the E major. 
This is a really short demonstration about the melody and I include them in those sweepings. So if you can find the melody in your chord progression, then you can apply them beautifully to your sweeps. And then always have an open ear for new chord progressions. I love to listen to music and then when I hear a cool chord progression, I try to instantly transcribe it and to steal this chord progression and make out of this chord progression maybe a cool sweep arpeggio progression. All right, let's move on to tip number two. Okay, tip number two is also a pretty basic one because the first two tips are more for beginners. The next two tips, tip three, four, and five, are a little bit more for advanced and intermediate guitar players. So the next tip is taking your basic sweep shapes and then play around with the leftover fingers that you have. For example, when I have this shape here. The finger that I use the most is my index finger because I have to jump from the 8th fret to the 9th fret here. Then I use in the second place my middle finger. So I can do a lot of stuff with my ring finger. This one I don't use at all in this shape and my pinky. So I can move around the pinky for example. And adding the ring finger to it. Maybe as well the middle finger when I have the time for it. And with this kind of idea and this method, we can put melodies, interesting melodies, to our sweeping section. For example, if we have a longer chord with no real melody in it, we can create some sort of melody by sweeping it. This is pretty easy, pretty basic, but extremely effective. So let us check out this method and other shapes that we have. For example, I can take this A minor shape here. And then I can add the minor 7 to it by just moving the pinky down here. Or the major 6th with using the ring finger here on the 14th fret. So I want to encourage you just to play around a little bit, just to experiment a little bit with, okay, which fingers can I use and which kind of movement can I do and what kinds of interval do I have here and how can we create some really cool tension and color by using those kind of methods. All right, this was tip number two. Tip number three is now a little bit more advanced when it comes to the theoretical kind of point of view. And now here I'm talking about substitutions. Okay, first, what is in substitution? A substitution is something where we're going to substitute one chord with a different chord. So we are playing a different chord over our yeah, root chord, whatever we want to call it. You have to see it like this. A chord is based on three notes, the root, the third, and the fifth. For example, again, A minor has the chords A, C, and E. C major has the chords C, E, and G. So by playing C major over A minor, we create A, C, E, and now the G is adding to it, and therefore we are creating an A minor 7 sound. But just not playing this shape over an A minor the next time, the basic A minor shape, just play some sort of G major shape and create an instant A minor 7 sound. Now this is the pretty basic one. There we don't have much tension in it. Let us take a different chord. What is happening when we are playing F sharp diminished over A minor? Well, let us take a deeper look at this. In A minor, again, A, C and E. In F sharp diminished, we have F sharp, A, we have the uh, C and we have the E as well. So three of those notes from the F sharp diminished is the same like in the A minor, A, C and E. The only one that stands out is the F sharp. Now what kind of interval is the F sharp seeing from A? Yeah, it's the major six. So by playing an F sharp diminished arpeggio, we create an A minor six sound, which is pretty, pretty awesome, pretty cool. When we're playing F major 7, for example, over it, we are creating F minor, minor 6 sound. Symphony of Destruction, for example, the first big lick, this one here. It's exactly this. It's an F sharp diminished over A minor, and therefore Marty Friedman is creating this Dorian kind of sound with the major 6 net. So here for you, what you can do is just take any chord doesn't matter if it's in the scale or not. Take any chord and experiment with, okay, I have A minor, how does it sound when I have C minor over A minor? Okay, what kinds of interval do I have here? Okay, I have the E sharp, it's a flat five. Okay, that can be some cool tension. Okay, what is going on when I'm playing, let's say, 
E major over A minor. Okay, there I have the major seven in it. Blah, blah, blah. Analyze the intervals and just experiment with the sound. And then maybe you will came out, come up with some cool, interesting new ideas. All right, this is tip number three, use substitution. Tip number four is a little bit more technical because here I'm talking about combining sweeping with other techniques. Like for example, tapping, legato or speed picking. For tapping, I wrote this pretty cool etude a few years ago. Let us check out the etude. Link for this is again in the description box. This is a pretty cool example how you can use tapping and sweeping to expand your sweeping. Here we go. or sweeping and speed picking. I released a pretty cool link on my Instagram social media page a few days ago as a story and it was this one here. And this is actually a lick where I try to combine sweeping with speed picking. Tabs for this lick is again in the link in the description box. So there are tons of ways how you can combine certain techniques together with sweeping. And I'm thinking about doing a video, a bigger video about this. If you are interested in seeing a bigger video about this, then write it down in the comments. This is a cool method how we can expand our sounds. Okay, tip number five is actually more like a trick number five. It's like two licks that I have here for you as well or two ideas that you can put onto your sweep shapes and I love these ideas lately a lot use them a lot and the first one is the reversed sweeping what do I mean by this well we all know this three string sweeper patch your idea that I play all the time in this video right we know maybe how to expand it to five string so now but we can take this kind of idea this kind of method here and doing it on the downside, on the lower side of the sweep, in reverse. Like this. And here what I'm doing is basically I take the same picking idea, the same method for the higher version of it, which goes like this. Pick, pull, pick, and then we have three down sweeps. Sweep, sweep, sweep. Pick, pull, pick, sweep, 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 pick, pull, pick, sweep, sweep, sweep. So and I'm taking these and I'm reversing it. So I have a pick, a hammer on, a down pick, and then three up sweeps. Up, up, up. So you see, it's basically the same movement, but reversed. You can use this method in all kind of sweep shapes. You can do it in five string from this kind of version. Here. Which is a little bit tricky because of the roll technique, or you can, for example, do it as well here. From this shape. Okay, and the next one is a really cool rhythmical idea that I love and lately it's kind of my secret sauce for the licks that I wrote lately. And it's basically this lick here. Okay, what do I have here? Instead of playing, uh, I try to combine a three string sweep shape with a five string sweep shape. You can do it like this. And I wrote a certain sequence to make it rhythmically a little bit more interesting. And the sequence goes like this. And then pick, sweep, sweep. And then I'm adding an optional note here on the B string with my pinky, in this case the ninth, the major second. And continue with the five string sweep up at your shape. Mm -hmm. 
And now you can of course add this uh, to the reverse sweeping that you have something like this. Okay, again slow. Reversed. Yes, and of course you can try out this kind of method and these kind of licks on other shapes as well. Okay, so much for my currently top five favorite tips and tricks. So I try to pimp my sweeping. I hope you like this little video. I hope you have fun learning, practicing and mastering those licks. Can't wait to see you in the next video. Cheers so far. Stay in progress. Bye.